The guidelines for screening for prostate cancer have changed. Again. And that's okay. The USPSDF is hard at work. This is Healthcare Triage News. Let's jump right into the new recommendation. Men ages 55 to 69 should, and I'm quoting, make an individualized decision about prostate cancer screening with their clinician. That's a change. Five years ago, the recommendations were to have no routine screening at any age. Prostate cancer is not uncommon. The American Cancer Society reports that we will likely see more than 160,000 new cases this year and almost 27,000 deaths. We screen for prostate cancer with a pretty simple blood test, the PSA test. It looks at levels of prostate-specific antigen. When those levels go up, it could mean a number of things, including just a large prostate, but it could also mean cancer. The reason that five years ago, the USPSDF recommended that we stop screening is that there are real harms from overdiagnosis. The treatments for prostate cancer, including radiation and radical prostatectomy, have high levels of adverse events. These include both incontinence and erectile dysfunction, and they can have a significant negative effect on men's quality of life. And there's evidence that the 2012 guidelines work. In a study published earlier this year in the New England Journal of Medicine, from 2010 to 2013, screening rates dropped from 33% to 25% in men in their 50s, and from 51% to 44% for men 60 to 74. The reported incidence of prostate cancer also went down, about 20% from 2011 to 2012, and another 6% from 2012 to 13. Whether that's a good thing, less overdiagnosis, or a bad thing, misdiagnoses, is hotly contested. What's changed? Well, there are new studies out there. Since the last recommendations, the largest randomized controlled trial to date has been performed, and it found that for every thousand men offered screening, one might avoid death from prostate cancer. An additional three men might avoid metastatic disease. Let's look at that another way. Right now, a 55-year-old man has about a 0.6% chance of dying of prostate cancer over the next 10 to 15 years. If he gets screened, that chance goes down to 0.5%. That's a 20% relative reduction, but a 0.1% absolute reduction. And that's real. But on the other hand, if he gets screened, then there's a 25% chance he'll have a positive PSA test at some point. He also has a 10% chance of being diagnosed with prostate cancer. And about two-thirds of men diagnosed with prostate cancer are treated with surgery or radiation quickly, and about 15% later on. And here's the kicker. About 75% of all the men treated will have impotence, incontinence, or both. Well, there is a new approach to treatment. It's known as active surveillance. Men diagnosed with lower risk cancer are monitored with more frequent PSA tests and biopsies rather than immediate surgery or radiation. If the cancer progresses, they move forward and think about treatment. About 40% of men diagnosed with lower risk disease were treated this way from 2010 to 2013. And that's probably accounted a little bit for the USPSTF softening as well. These new data are good enough to argue that screening might offer a small potential benefit of reducing your chances of dying from prostate cancer. But these need to be weighed against the still real and bad outcomes from overdiagnosis. That's why the USPSDF recommends that you talk about this with your doctor and make your own decision as to what you want to do. Healthcare Triage is supported in part by viewers like you through Patreon.com, a service that allows you to support the show through a monthly donation. Your support makes this show bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz and Jonathan Dunn, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam. Thanks, Joe, Jonathan, and Sam. More information can be found at patreon.com slash healthcare triage.